today I'm going to be showing you a great trick on how to get a realistic metallic printed effect in Photopea. So let's get straight to it. So here we've got a blank soda can and what I want to do is show you how to take an artwork like this that I just mocked up, Photopea Cola, for Photopea Pro Cola should I say, and we're going to make it look like it's printed directly onto this can. Now this is quite a difficult thing to do unless you know the trick I'm about to show you because can see the can itself it gets this metallic look because of all the hard edged highlights and shadows and reflections and all that kind of thing they give it the look of a shiny glossy metallic object and that's very hard to recreate um, from scratch if you were trying to add that shading to the artwork itself or your label so if I drag that over here you might be tempted to just try some blending modes um, to see if you can get it to merge nicely with that texture in the background and look like it's printed on the can. But you'll find that whatever you try, it doesn't quite look right because the blending modes, let's just try overlay, no. Whatever you try, it will either knock out shadows, highlights, or have some kind of interaction that will change the colors and you can never quite get it looking as it should. So I'm going to show you a trick because instead of using blending modes on the artwork, what we're going to do is to leave the artwork or the label where it is. And I'm going to create a duplicate of the soda can layer, but we don't have to duplicate the entire layer, just the area that's safely around the label or the text or whatever that we're putting on. So I'm just going to make a rectangle around the soda can. And on the soda can layer, I'm going to press Control or Command J, depending if you're on a PC or a Mac to um, copy that to a new layer and I'm just going to call that can texture and so I'm going to move this above the cola artwork so at the moment it's, it's just made that disappear because it's just overlaying the top but that's just a temporary thing I'm going to right click on this can texture layer and turn it into a smart object and this is just so I can make some adjustments later I'm going to hold the alt key and click on the can texture layer and it's going to clip that to the cola layer below. Now it still doesn't like anything to happen at the moment, but it will do shortly. So with the can texture layer highlighted, I'm gonna press Control or Command U to bring up hue saturation adjustment, and then I'll just desaturate that layer completely. You don't need to do an adjustment layer for this, which is why this shortcut's good, because it will apply it directly to the layer. And you can still adjust because it's um, a smart object. So now we've desaturated that, so it looks like this. But now what we want to do is we want to now change the blending mode of this layer. So we've now got the texture, desaturated version of the texture and all the shading on top of the cola layer, but clipped to it, because if I unclipped it, it would just look like that. So it's clipped to it's only affecting, so it's only affecting the area of the label. And now we change the blending mode of this. And we'll change it to normally one of the contrast blending modes, which is overlay, soft light, hard light. Normally one of these three, depending on the image. But for this, I know that hard light works. So we change it to hard light. All of a sudden, we've got that realistic look of actually an artwork, a label printed onto a metallic soda can. Now, if I turn that layer on and off again, you can see what it's adding. And the beauty of this is the label behind or whatever you've put behind it, picture text, you can now move this round or change it to anything else and it's going to retain the texture and the lighting and all the kind of metallic details are on top. So it's going to retain that. So you can move this around and it's going to be faithful to the metallic texture behind. And if you look, it's even included and put some of the little water drops on top of the on top of the label as well. But that's not it. We can tweak this now to make it look just how we like. So the reason why I made this can texture a smart object in the first place was so we could do some further adjustments and be able to change them in real time. So I'm going to press Control or Command L on that can texture layer, and that's going to add a layers. Um, sorry, a levels adjustment. Now what we can do with this is we can grab either the shadow, the midtone, or the highlight points of the levels and tweak them to see if we can 
make it look a little bit more to taste. So I want to brighten this up overall. So if I drag the highlight point to the left, it's just going to brighten that layer. It's just going to brighten up the brighter areas and just make it look a bit punchy. If you had an example of this kind of image where the darker areas of the reflection weren't dark enough, you could then do the same with the shadow and pull the shadow in. But I think that's making it too dark. So I've pulled the highlight in to brighten it up. Might play with the mid-tone a little bit. Something like that's looking quite nice. And I'll click OK. And you can see if I turn the levels on and off, it's just made it nice and bright, but we can always change that. And the reason why we did hue saturation in the first place and we desaturated it is if I turn that layer off and that adjustment off, you'll see then that it looks awful because it's just adding the red from the can on top as well. So we desaturated it. Then we applied some levels just to tweak it. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and got some real value out of it. And if you did, please consider leaving a like, a comment or subscribing if you're not already done so, so you don't miss out on anything in the future. And I really hope you like this and thank you for watching. We'll see you in the next one.